Greetings. And uh, today, again, it's going to be about courage. And courage is bravery, valor, bravado. It permits someone to face extreme danger or difficult situations. It's not the absence of fear, but the ability to overcome it. Today's message is going to be about courage to look deep inside. It's a story about ourselves. Um, we're not going to look at any Bible character, though we might be able to compare ourselves with some. The book of Lamentations says it this way, 340, let us search out and examine our ways and turn back to the Lord. In other words, I think sometimes God is saying to us, hey, you know what? You need to take a look at yourself. You need to get a grip. Uh, sometimes we stray, sometimes we move left or right and we, we get off course. God is saying, examine yourself. Take a look at where you are. You know, the Bible says the, one of the good ways to find out is, is through the Word of God. The Bible says the Word of God, it's, it's, it's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. To me, in my own imagination, God's Word will show us where we stand and it will also show us how to go. And so we begin to examine ourselves, line ourselves up with the Word of God. Uh, Psalms 77 and 6 says, I, this is David, I call to remembrance my song in the night. I meditate within my heart and my spirit makes a diligent search. David doesn't take this lightly. David goes at nighttime and he starts thinking about himself and he, he doesn't just do it on his own. He just doesn't leave it up to himself but God's Spirit gets involved in this as well. And God's Spirit wants to lead us and guide us into all truth. And God's Spirit uh, wants to, to rule in our lives. And all we need to do is surrender and submit ourselves to Him. Uh, it's a real serious thing, you know. I think God always would have us take a look at ourselves. Here's what Paul wrote. He says, but let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and, and drink of the cup. Uh, this doesn't just pertain to men, but men and women, you know, and God is, Paul is saying, before you take communion, examine yourself. Where are you? Where are you in regards to your relationship with God? Where are you in regards to your walk? Uh, are, are you walking in the way that God wants you to walk? And if you're not, take ownership of that, confess that to God and, and, and repent. You know, sometimes uh, we find out maybe we don't love God as much as, as we thought we did. I, I, I'll be real with you. Uh, one day, uh, because I end up speaking so much, I felt the Holy Spirit spoke to me one day and said, you know what, Bill? You love what you do for me more than you're loving me. And you know, God is a jealous God and he won't allow us to have any kind of God. Ministry had become a mistress to me. And then it's like when he wrote to the church of Ephesus in the book of Revelation, he, he, he says, I, he, he commended them for all the great things he did. God commended me for the places I was going and sharing the gospel. But just like he said to them, but I hold this one thing against you. You don't love me like you used to. Take a look, see how far you've fallen, repent. Go back and do your first works over. What is God really saying right there? I think, fall in love with me again. You, you, you kind of drifted. You, you, your love for me has kind of waned. You know, the Bible says in the last days, because iniquity would abound, the, the hearts of many would wax cold. God is saying, no, come on back. Fall in love with me again. You know what God will never do with you or I? He will never fall in love with you again. He'll never fall in love with me again because he will never fall out of love with us in the first place. What an incredible God we serve. He calls us to examine ourselves. Uh, as I was preparing this just a few moments ago, as a matter of fact, to put a smile on my face, I, I remember back when I was a police officer and I had been in the military police and so I prided myself in the way that I dressed and the way I, in the way I carried myself and, and how I would look, you know, and I would straighten everything up. And in my office, I had a mirror I was a detective and I, I had a mirror and it was an elongated mirror. And the mirror made you look a lot thinner than you were. Wow. I, you know what? I would stand in front of that mirror and that mirror would say to me, you know, Bill, your belly's not that big. Hmm. I would turn sideways and it would say, you know what, Bill? That part of your body's not that big either. You know what? That mirror was lying to me. And I walked away from that mirror one day and this is what I feel the Holy Spirit said to me. If any man thinks he's something that he's not, he deceives himself. And then I kind of felt that God put these thoughts in my heart. If you don't like being overweight, 
do something about it. But don't stand in front of that mirror pretending that you're not. So God calls us to examine ourselves, to listen for his voice when he wants to tweak this and he wants to tweak that. You know, one of the other big issues that I see in, in the body, and I've seen it with myself, the issue of unforgiveness, where many of us have been done wrong and, and we hold a grudge and we're angry. I, I want you to think about the answer to this question. Who's living rent free in your head right now? Who are you angry at? Who are you upset with? Who, when you're driving down the road and all of a sudden they come walking through and you want to lay hands on them, but not in this way, but maybe more like in this way. Uh, you know, God doesn't play that game. And, and you know what? Forgiveness is not conditional. You know, everybody predominantly knows the Our Father prayer. And right in the middle of that prayer, and forgive us our trespasses and we forgive those who trespass against us. And then it goes on to say at the end of the prayer, lead us not into temptation, not into the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. And then the, the Bible says, and if you don't forgive men their sins, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you of yours. But more importantly than all of that, I think, Ephesians 4.32, it says it in one translation, and be as ready to forgive others as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Forgiveness has nothing to do with what's been done to you. Forgiveness is all about what has been done for you. And so God says, I let you go. I let you go on all of your sin. Let them go. Forgiveness is not for the other person's benefit. It's for your benefit. So it doesn't turn into bitterness and resentment and it defiles you. Because the Bible says, don't you know that you're the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells within you. And if anyone defiles the temple, you destroy. We don't need to get defiled over somebody else's stuff. Forgive. What is it that God is trying to get at in your life? What is he that's trying to get at in my life? What are those things that he continually shows up? What I have found out in these 41 years of serving Jesus, you can't shake him. You can't get rid of him. You can't turn him off. He will pursue you. He is relentless. And that why is why he has given the name the Hound of Heaven. There is no getting away. So what is it that he's trying to get at in our lives? Let's have the courage to face it. Let's have the courage to be men and women of God. Take a look and deal and turn from it and return to the Lord. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you were blessed by the material. We also want to remind you that there are several great ways to make sure you're staying up to date on our content as part of our 360 Legacy Plan. First, subscribe to this channel by clicking subscribe below. You can also download our incredible new app in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Just search Legacy Minded Men. And finally, visit our website at LegacyMindedMen.org for more information on what we believe, upcoming events, and how to join a group. Thanks again for watching.